Hello, I'm Cristina Costantini from the University of Chieti Pescara in Italy, and I'm going to talk about some joint work with Tom Kurtz on reflecting diffusions in non smooth domains. A reflecting diffusion is a diffusion process that is constrained to remain in the domain in the following way. When the process hits the boundary, it receives a push in a direction belonging to a prescribed cone. For instance, in this picture on this upper boundary, the cone is simply given by the positive multiples of G2. On this lower boundary, the cone is the set of positive multiples of G1. But at the corner, the cone is the set of all convex combinations of G1 and G2. More precisely, a reflecting diffusion is a solution of this stochastic differential equation with reflection. The push, the amount of push on the boundary is measured by this lambda process. And it is minimal in the sense that lambda increases only when x is at the boundary. In the sequel, I am going to refer to this stochastic differential equation with reflection as SDER. Now, reflecting diffusions come up as approximations of queuing systems, as singular stochastic controls, and in many other applications. In many examples, the domain is non-smooth. In this case, existence and uniqueness of solutions to SDER are not obvious. In particular, existence is important in singular stochastic control problems, while uniqueness is important in all diffusion approximation problems. Now, let us suppose that the domain D is given by the intersection of a finite number of domains DI with C1 boundary. And for convenience, we will suppose that D is bounded. I am going to call the intersection between the boundary of DI and the boundary of D a phase of D. At each point x on the boundary, we will consider the set i of x of the indices of all faces to which x belongs. On each face, it is assigned a direction of reflection gi. Therefore, at every point on the boundary, we can consider two cones. The normal cone, that is the closed convex cone generated by the normal directions to all faces to which x belongs, and the cone of directions of reflection, that is the closed convex cone generated by the directions of reflection to all faces at all faces to which x belongs. In addition, we will consider the subcone N capital I that is generated only by the normal directions with index, belong, with index little i belonging to some subset capital I of i of x, and the subcone g capital I generated only by the directions of reflection with index belonging to capital I. Finally, for simplicity, we will suppose that the normal directions at every point in the boundary form a set of linearly independent vectors. This assumption can be eliminated, as we will discuss at the end of the talk. In the case of reflecting Brownian motion in polyhedron, there is an exhaustive result due to Diane Williams. So let us suppose that the DIs are open half spaces, so that the normal on each face is constant, and that the coefficients of SDER, B and sigma, are also constant. Diane Williams prove existence and uniqueness of the solution to SDER under the following set of conditions. The first condition is that the direction of reflection on each face is constant and it forms an angle of less than pi over 2 with the normal direction. The second condition is that at every point on the boundary, for every subset capital I of I of X, there is a vector in the subcone G capital I that forms an angle of less than pi over 2 with all the normal directions in the corresponding subcone and capital I. Specularly, 
there is a vector in the subcone n capital i that forms an angle of less than pi over 2 with all directions of reflection in the corresponding subcone g capital i. The conditions of dying Williams are optimal in the sense that they are necessary for existence of reflecting Brownian motion in a polyhedron. In the case of diffusions in a piecewise C1 domain, the reference result is a result by Dupuy and Ishii. Dupuy and Ishii prove existence and uniqueness of the solution to SDER under this other set of conditions. The coefficients of the SDR, V and sigma, and the direction of reflection on each face must be Lipschitz continuous. And on each face, the angle between the direction of reflection and the normal direction is bounded by some constant angle strictly less than pi over 2. The second condition is that at every point on the boundary, there is a direction of reflection that forms an angle strictly less than pi over 2 with all normal directions. The third condition is formulated in terms of a family of compact convex sets, and it is somewhat complex. As you can imagine, it is not easy to verify. However, there is a sufficient condition. At every point x on the boundary, we can define a matrix R of x in this way. Then the matrix R of x will contain the information about the angles between each direction reflection at x and each normal direction at x. If the spectral radius of R of x minus the identity is strictly less than 1 at every point on the boundary, then condition C will be satisfied. Condition C prime actually goes back to 1981 and it appeared first in a paper by Harris and Ryan. Condition C prime is easy to verify, but it is somewhat restrictive. In fact, even without re replacing condition C by condition C prime, the Dupuy and Ishi conditions are not optimal. In particular, if we consider a polyhedron, they do not reduce to the conditions of Diane Williams. This is a simple example where the Dupuy and Ishii conditions are not satisfied, but the Diane Williams conditions are satisfied. There are many more examples where the Dupuy and Ishii conditions are not satisfied. In particular, there are many examples that come up in diffusion approximation of human networks. This is an example. Uh, taken from a paper by Kang and Williams of 2012. So, motivated by these considerations, we started uh, trying to improve uh, the conditions of Dupuy and Ishii. And we came up with a different set of conditions. Here is our set of conditions. The first condition is actually similar to the first condition of Dupuy and Ishii, because it says that the coefficients b and sigma and the direction reflection on each face are continuous, and that on each face, the angle between the direction reflection and the normal reflection is bounded by a const constant angle strictly less than pi over 2. Our second condition is reminiscent of the conditions of Diane Williams. And it says that for every point on the boundary, for every subset capital I of I of X, for each vector in the subcone N capital I, there is a vector in subcone G capital I that forms with it an angle of less than pi over 2. Our third condition is just that at every point on the boundary, there is a normal direction that forms an angle of less than pi over 2 with all directions of reflection. For polyhedrons, our conditions are actually equivalent to dying Williams conditions. So they are in some sense optimal. Under these conditions, we were able to prove, first of all, an existence result. 
for every initial condition X0, there exists a solution to SDR. Moreover, the solution is a strong Markov process, and if uniqueness holds among strong Markov solutions of SDR, then it holds among all solutions. The second part of the statement is important because the strong Markov property is an essential ingredient in the arguments to prove uniqueness. Let me also remark that the assumption that the normal directions at every point on the boundary are linearly independent rules out cusp-like singularities or points where there is a unique normal and the direction reflection is discontinuous. But this assumption can be replaced by a weaker condition that allows for these situations. In this case, uh, also condition C in the previous slide will be weakened accordingly. More recently, we have proved a uniqueness result in dimension two. If the boundaries of the domains the eyes are of class C2, the directional reflection on each face is which is continuous, the coefficients of SDR, B and sigma are Lipschitz continuous, and the diffusion matrix is non-similar at corners, that is where two faces meet, then there is a unique solution to SDR. We also have a uniqueness result in arbitrary dimension larger than two in the case when D is a domain with a single, uh, with one, just one singular point. For instance, D could be a smooth cone or a horn. Here are some references and thank you for your attention.